And so our first question to you is, what would you see is, how would you define the problem that is facing the Cuba-U.S. relations as it is currently? So the real hurdle to normalizing relations or improving uh, U.S. relations with Cuba is that sort of domestic political uh, piece. Um, and the hardliners in both Havana and in Florida, um, but hardliners, you know, Menendez from, from, uh, from and, and Albio Sierras from uh, New Jersey as well, Democrats. I mean, it's, not, it's bipartisan on the, on the sort of status quo groups, the groups that want to maintain the embargo. Um, for a very long time, those people on both on both sides of the straits could just do something and ratchet up pressure on the other, and then it would stall out any type of reform. So, for instance, hardliners so inside of the Cuban government knew that if they arrested or beat or detained or, in, in one case, shot down an airplane, that, uh, Brothers to the Rescue Airplane, if they were to do that to democratic activists or activists who had strong connections to American in the Cuban American community, that that would put a lot of any any it would put reforms that are moving forward on ice, and so they in some ways people in Havana had a control switch for how quick or slow um, U.S. policy change moved towards them because everybody in the U.S. says, look, until we get certain concessions out of Cuba, we don't make any policy shifts. So what that meant was as long the Cubans held the keys to, to the policy making. Cubans made concessions, they could get a relief from the embargo, but if they found the embargo served their purposes, for instance, it gives them an excuse for things not working out, um, or they don't want normalized relationship because having an enemy made it easier to organize um, their own uh, political constituencies against the United States, um, they had a very nice foil in the U.S. policy, and our policy making was almost robotic, you know, not very thoughtful. It was, you know, these things happen in Cuba, we ratchet down uh, pressure. Um, and that doesn't hurt their hardliners. It makes their hardliners, uh, it actually hurts their reforms. Anybody inside who said, no, we should be opening up political speech, we should open up um, the, the, all the reforms that they're making right now, anybody who called for those reforms in previous years would come under pressure because you're like, oh, that's what the U.S. wants us to do. Um, so they would do things, you know, quite opposite, just just because the U.S. wanted it. So free markets and more speech and greater freedom of assembly and things like that, they wouldn't do because of, of the relationship. So I'm not sure.